So I got the phrase there, life's a pitch. For those of you who are thinking it's not misspelled, it's supposed to be life's a pitch. And my philosophy in anything I do has always been that no matter where you are in, from a work perspective, and probably sometimes in your personal life as well, you're always involved in a pitch. Whether it's trying to convince somebody in a business that you work in that you want to start something new, whether it's taking a product to find some money to invest in your business, whether it's convincing your kids that they should leave you alone for an hour and a half so that you can watch some sport, you're always involved in a pitch. And the things that I'd like to discuss with you today is really just things which, some of the things which I've experienced that I've come across. Um, but as I say, it, it's, 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 it's things that I use throughout my life and not only in that pitch scenario. No? There's a bit, ah. Oh. I'm gonna hold it. Okay, we can skip the agenda. So I see myself as an entrepreneur, okay? And what is that for me? So I'm, I'm not an entrepreneur. I haven't started a business or invest, got money to invest in a product. But within the corporate envir environment, I'm an entrepreneur. I've set up businesses within Deloitte. I've started offices. I've started new product ranges. And that's where I get part of my experience from to chat to you today. But also, a lot of what I do on the corporate finance side is sitting on the other side. So I'm the guy helping to decide whether the money should be handed out. Some of the things which through, through my life which have, which have stood me um, by, and just want to focus on one or two of these. Relationships, um, I think it's important. I think some of the relationships which you build now at university, probably in five, ten years' time, they will be useful for you and they will be valuable to you. Resilience, I think in your, in your life, in your business, in your companies that you're going to start one day when you're all young budding entrepreneurs, you will go through difficult times. It's not always easy. And I think it's important in these times to be resilient. And I think it's also just important to remember that the pitch, the actual physical, I mean, Philip spoke there about those three minutes that you get. That's just part of your journey. In real life, there's years, months working up to that pitch, getting to know the people, getting to know the bankers, getting to know the accountants, getting to know the lawyers. And you might not be successful in that pitch, but if you want to get back for a second attempt, make sure you know those people. And for me, that's why those relationships are so important. And at any time, if you want to ask some questions, please stop. So I know all of you spend every day of the week in class. Well, I suppose some of you. Okay. So instead of just listening to me, I just want to play you a, I'm not going to play the whole clip, but part of it, and you guys might recognize that set. So this is from Dragon's Den, and I found this on YouTube, and I was very excited when I, when I found this, because I saw it was a South African guy that was going to pitch. So that was, but I mean, that's more or less where my, where my excitement stopped. But, um, Can you make a good business out of art? Our next entrepreneur thinks so, but a Durban-born artist and metal worker Stephen Myberg is to get an investment that have to persuade the dragons. I'm here today to attract a 70,000 pound investment for a 20% equity share in my company. Marco Designs is essentially a design and manufacture company, and we specialize in a range of swinging chairs. Um, I'm just going to take you back for a second to South Africa, apartheid South Africa, when I was much younger, and um, the alarm in my father's factory business. And as we enter the building, the scene that I witness is an SAP dog attacking a young boy that they found in a, in a cardboard box. Okay? And the boy sprayed out on the floor, and the product inside that box as well was sprayed out on the floor in front of me as well. And the thing that really struck me was the lack of value between all the, all the participating ingredients to that scene. There was no real value in the product. There was no real value 
in the relationship between the people because the boy didn't bury the cop and the cop definitely didn't bury the boy. And so that day, a, a seed was planted in me and that seed is growing for passion and that passion is about finding a sweet place between people, environment, and product. What we do is we invent beauty. And we, but the gift that we give to our clients is this creative living. So today I am here to find that money, to get that, that cash that is going to drive my business forward into the next few years. But really I'm also here to find a dragon heart. The dragon heart to stand next to me and cover my world, my world, with this kind of treasure that I'm in. So if you'd like to try it out, we can. Um, and uh, I'll answer all your questions about this. I'll try. A creative approach to pitching from Hampshire-based artist Steve Myberg. Mm, it's quite nice. It's very regal. Yeah, it's so good. Like it. Like it's that one. Yeah. He may have taken the dragons on a journey back to his childhood, but will that be enough to receive a seventy thousand pounds investment in return for twenty percent of his bespoke garden furniture design business? Mm. Hillary today needs to go back to basics. Where are these manufactured? In my factory. Where? In New Hampshire. So you actually make these here? Yeah, we've just actually reached a production capability of 150 units a year. So what's your route to market? This year I've put all of my efforts into forging relationships and forging joint ventures and I've started to create some really interesting ones. At the moment I've got five hotels that are on my books, okay? That I get the hotel the installation and I get to feed them off the marketing from that. So I've had them in the hotel for a month and I've sold two pieces. And how much did they sell for? Five thousand pounds, three thousand two hundred pounds, eighteen thousand pounds, and five thousand pounds. To be honest with you, I'm only now interested in becoming a business person. You know, it's actually coming to me now. I, I can feel it. And, um, and so how can I feel? How do you feel about it? I'm interested in it. You know, I'm really interested in it. Well, how do you feel? If it's an IG vision of where you want to go. I want my book to touch everybody in the UK. My vision of my design is to really push it across the world, to really sell this, to make this the next iconic piece of furniture. Steve's story may have charmed Hillary today. Who's investing? Who's investing in the business? Show of hands. Three. Who's not investing? Okay, the rest of you. Um, also, just out of interest, who's from Durban? You see, when I heard he was from Durban, I was just glad he was wearing shoes. You see, if you got, you got, you got shoes on. You see, but they were white shoes he had on. Um, just to think a little bit about the concepts, the principles, and the behaviors that Steve in his, in his, in his pitch has uh, uh, done. Um, and I don't want to go into the details of it now, but, but the, but just to come back to them when we, go, when we go through some of the different aspects. So just keep on thinking about it. You know, I think at, at the end of the day, if, if you go to Google or if you go and read your business magazines, there are hundreds and thousands of articles about top 10 tips for the pitch, for Harvard's top 10 tips. And there's a myriad of things. So as part of the preparation for today, what I did is I went through all of those. I spoke to all of the people that I deal with and just try to come up with what I thought were the common words and themes that you will find in each one of these articles or when you speak to different people and to try and tie them back to Steve's presentation and to some real life examples. Um, the one aspect that I want to, want to touch on to give it a slide on its own is around networks. I spoke a little bit about it. Uh, when, we, when we do talk about pitches and raising money and so on, a lot of the questions people ask is, you know, but I've, got a, but I've got a network, and I can use that network to get my money and to get my business off the ground. Maybe, but generally not. Your network's going to get you the meeting. It's going to get you through the door. But that network of yours that is important to you, and it's that network because it's the rich businessman that has, owns lots of businesses and going to invest in your business, is not that successful because he's invested in a lot of poor businesses. He's invested in the best businesses. So that's why that network is important, but understand 
it's not going to get you the money or the deal, but it most likely will get you into the first meeting or through the door. So when reviewing all of these different um, lists and books and what I've come across, there were five sort of key concepts. It was around the person, how prepared they was, the business model, the delivery of the pitch itself, and they often spoke about common, common pitfalls. So I've sort of listed all of these down there, um, all these common ones, and I want to highlight a few of those which I think were relevant to Steve, and a few of them which I think for me are very relevant. Um, I'll just quickly go through the ones that I'm not going to expand on. I mean, relevant experience is important, vision, integrity, business acumen, coachable, all of those things are important. The one I want to stop at under the person is around passion. Now, you know, I define it as a humble arrogance. You must be confident in your product, but you mustn't be a know-it-all. You mustn't be a, a smart ass. Okay? But you need to have passion. Somebody is not going to fork money out of his back pocket to help you set up a business if they, don't, if they believe that you don't believe in your product. So passion is important. Steve, did he have passion? Yeah, I think he had passion. Just out of interest. No, no, and I'll send you the link if you want to watch the, the, the rest of the, um, the, that clip of Steve. But no one invested in his business, okay? Um, but he had passion. But passion alone is not going to get you the deal. In terms of preparation, I mean, I think in anything in life, preparation is important. And um, I think they spoke about the three minutes you'll get in the, in, the, in the launch lab in terms of a pitch. Now understand, three minutes, you know, once you've sorted out your microphone and your, your notes, your three minutes is, are gone. People often refer to the elevator pitch, where you're literally with somebody in the elevator trying to sell him an idea, and that's the only opportunity you get to speak to them. Then you've got 30 seconds. So... You know, once we've opened up all these little blocks on the slide, think about it, because the majority of those concepts, somehow, you need to get across in three minutes. If you get through that first meeting, you might have a half an hour later, but initially you will have three minutes. And I think it's also important to understand that the, the people that get approached for money and for funds and those kind of things, they get thousands of these, not a year, a month. And they, have to, and they probably end up funding three out of that thousand. And that's why those three minutes of yours are so important. So just in terms of the, of the preparation, um, know your business, know the market. I think that thing about know the market is also quite important. And I think it's also important in terms of knowing the industry. I mean, if the whole world is going through a technological boom and it's all about digital, whatever the case may be, I don't know if the right idea is to go to somebody to invest in a new analog technology, as an example. So it's important that you do time your, whether it's a product or your idea, it's important from a market perspective that you time it correctly. So now, know the numbers. Now, I mean, okay, Steve knew that um, what his goods sold for, well, he sold, he hasn't sold one of the 18,000 pounds one, but he sold a 5,000 pound one, two of them in eight months. Um, what you didn't see on the clip, um, was where they did ask him a little bit about the numbers. But his knowledge was very, very limited. Now, the people behind the desks are the people giving the money. Their business is to analyze numbers. That's what they do. They look at the passion, but they want you to understand the numbers. And without you being able to demonstrate that you understand the numbers, what does it cost to make these things? What does it cost to go to the market? What's it going to cost to increase my capacity? Why are you giving me this money? So you're giving me this money to increase my capacity. So if I increase my capacity, am I going to be able to deliver more? It's important that you know those numbers to the nth degree. And again, you won't, you won't necessarily have the opportunity to go through all of that. But I can promise you, if there are questions, the questions will invariably be about the numbers. I, the, the, you know, whether it's 70,000 pounds or 100,000 rand, whatever the case may be, this isn't a gift. It's an investment. It's a loan. They want it back in some form or another. And without, uh, without them having confidence in you understanding the numbers, they think they're not going to get the money back. Not that I want to go to the one there, sort of at the bottom there, practice, practice, practice. Go and stand in front of the mirror. And I've, and I've realized of late, 
So part of my New Year's resolution for 2014 is to start getting fit. So I've, gone to, so I've started going to the gym. Now, a lot of you are saying you, you can't see that, but I do. And, I, and I've noticed now that this part of the, of the pitch will be very, very easy to, to students here and still much to your generation. Because for every three rep that they, in the gym, I see people, and then they do another three without the weights in the mirror. So there's a lot of that practicing in the mirror. So I think that'll be, that'll be very easy for you guys. But don't underestimate the importance of practicing. Go and practice with your younger brother, with your girlfriend, with your boyfriend. It's very, very important. Let them ask you questions. The business model. Now, this is not to be confused with the business plan, but the business model is your holistic concept of what you take into the market, how you take it to the market, etc. Now, for me, a key one there is the problem and the solution. Now, Steve had a a swinging chair made of copper that again which you didn't see from there which somebody commented that you, they could make for a third of the price in Morocco now I don't know if Steve if there was a real problem that Steve was trying to resolve there now there are two ways for me or two things that I look at from a from an entrepreneurial perspective there's your inventor and there's your serial entrepreneur now your inventor is a, is a person who invents a product and hopefully it's a product that no one else has invented or copied or whatever the case may be and everybody really needs this product now that's easy relatively easy assuming you can prove a lot of other things to go and get money for and then you get the serial entrepreneur the person who goes through life understanding the, in the industries that are um, working at the moment understanding the problems that are out there and identifying opportunities and for me a key one is I mean I don't know how many of you are familiar with um, Kuro the private school so there was a somebody who identified a problem with quality education in a certain region where they were living so what did they do they built a school okay so there's a solution great example ten years later there were still some people that felt that in certain areas there was a, a, a lack of quality education. So they went to somebody and they said, here is a problem. Can you give us some money? Did they get money to develop that concept further? For sure. Okay. So there's a problem and there's a solution. And I think from Steve's perspective, I, yeah, I, I don't know if he, if he filled that gap. Team skill and leadership. I, I think if you go to anybody in, a, in the private equity space or in the venture capital space that is looking to invest money in a business will tell you that they invest largely into a management team um, so be, be, before this uh, this lecture I actually sp spoke to somebody in yeah, in Stellamosh specifically around this and asked them what are the two most important criteria for, for you to invest and th the one was and I'll get to the other one later but the one was the team so if you're doing a pitch, you don't have to know everything. You don't have to be the smartest guy in the room. Focus on what you know, and for the things that you don't know, find the specialists, find the people that do know. So Steve was alone there. He admitted that he's got not much business acumen or business sense. But not once did he say that, you know, he's got a really good friend that's a uh, chartered accountant or a tax person or whatever that's helping him with this or has helped him drive this part of his business T Steve was the team okay my feeling I don't know if that worked for him another second most important point that when I, when I spoke to this person what they told me is the proof of performance and and projections don't hypothesize in a pitch back up with facts figures actions what's been done and what does that really mean it means that coming back to you that somebody who gives you money whether it's debt or equity he wants this money to be paid back so he wants to know that if you say you're going to make a million rand and sell a million widgets that you can do it so how do you do, I mean in real life how, how do you physically do that it's not it's not always that easy and I mean I think this is where a lot of people fall fall flat I think for two examples um, that I can think of I was once involved with a, a, a company that, again, saw a gap in terms of um, the market, in terms of sustainable fishing. We all know that there's that certain kinds of fish are being um, 
fished out and destroyed, so they said, okay, there's a problem. People still want to eat fish, so what's the solution? It's sustainable fish farms. So now, they could have gone initially with this concept of sustainable fish farms to an investor. Probably wouldn't have got them that far. What they did is they probably spent the better part of three years building up their business in a, small, in a much smaller scale, proving that there's a market out there by selling it, proving how they were going to take these things to the market. So the day when they went to go and pitch for the money, they set their problem, they set their solution, and obviously they had their projections, and when the people asked them, but can you really do this? They could go, yes, we can. We have done it in a smaller scale, but we've tested the market, we've farmed the fish, we've sold the fish, and, I, and that's what I mean from proof of, of, of projections. Um, the other concept is, you know, if you are going to be making microchips, new kind of microchip, and you go and look for money, I guess you know. Can you stand in front of them and say, listen, yeah, I've actually got an order from Intel to buy these microchips, to license my technology. I mean, how powerful is that? So you know you're going to sell a million of these. I just need the factory to start making them. Those kind of things are important in being able to prove your projections or just to be able to prove that you are, have got facts behind the substance. So, so the question is, so I've got, a, I've got a product or I've got an idea or something, but I think it's going to sell, but I don't know yet. But I'm going to go and see some people and I'm going to build a factory and I'm hopefully going to sell it. But more or less, yeah. It, it's difficult. I mean, if you, if you go and borrow money from a bank as an individual, by law, they need to, they need to put you through an affordability test. I mean, can you pay it back? And in the minds of these people looking at this, they go, sure. How can they pay it back? So if, if there were two of you pitching and you've got this idea and the one person had some takeoff agreement or some contract to sell it, he'd probably more likely than not get the money. But, it, but yeah, I mean, it's, it's a really, it's a difficult one that. You know, if, if it is a product or an idea which is so much better, so much more efficient and it's going to change the world, those kind of ones which don't come that often are usually quite obvious to spot. But I mean, if it's a case of, you know, I'm coming, I want to start a coffee shop. There are a million coffee shops. It really is quite difficult. So I mean, I, my advice would probably be, yeah, is, is in that case, let's just say it's impossible to make it a, a small venture and do it for a while and test it. It's probably to test the demographics of who you're going to sell this to. So say, listen, yeah, I want, I want to start this now, but let's take three months and go out to my friends, different universities, into towns, wherever I can, and test the demographics in terms of talking to people, filming people, recording that information. Because at least then you can go back and say, listen, I've spoken to 2,000 people. 800 of them said they would most definitely buy this product of mine. So that, I don't think one must underestimate the, the, um, yeah, the usefulness and the importance of testing your demographic, especially in a, in a scenario like that where you yeah, potentially might not have any sort of backing or evidence in terms of where, you, of, of where the revenue is going to come from. I think another important thing probably around there is, is, is have you put any of your own money in? So again, standing in front of somebody where you haven't put any of your own money in, people are going, oh, does he really trust us? But if you've taken out a second mortgage on your house to finance a startup of this business, People are going, geez, this guy really believes in it. So, you know, those kind of things also, well, it's not a science. There's a, there's a little bit of an art from both sides of the table in this thing. And they've sort of answered your question there. Um, in terms of the, of the delivery, I think that was, uh, yeah, probably one of the difficultest ones to put together for me. The second block up there, um, relevant narrative. You know, and it, and it sort of ties up into passion. But tell a story. I think it's good to tell a story, okay? But, but please, make sure that your story is the, the key word there is relevant. How does it tie up to this business idea that you want to try and sell over here? 
I mean, Steve told a story about all the apartheid days and the policeman and the dog and the SAP, and I don't even know if those people would know what SAP is, but I cannot find the link between his narrative and his business idea, okay? So tell a story, explain the journey, but make sure that your link between that and your idea is tangible. Um, I've highlighted the, 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 uh, the block there about business plan. A business plan is important. It's probably not that important for the pitch itself because there's no way in three minutes you're going to be able to go through your business plan. But by the time you go and pitch, you need your business plan done. You need the executive summary. One of the questions that, I don't know if we got that far in the clip, um, they asked Steve, what's your route to market? Now that's something which you would deal with in your, in your business plan. So make sure your business plan is done, that it's tested, that you know, however you, you go about doing that, whether you've got a mentor or a coach or somebody that can help you with that, but make sure you, your, your business plan is done in terms of, um, um, yeah, I suppose, more, more from when the questions come. The, the last sort of common aspect of the different um, research that I did or that I looked through was they often mentioned about the common pitfalls. So now the one that comes through the most, and, and this is probably the one that, that I've seen the most, is excessive valuations or excessive projections. So it's a new product and people have got their five-year projections and it's making 200 million rand in year three. They've never sold any of these, okay, but it's going to make 200 million in year three. I mean, just out of interest. So Steve wanted 70,000 pounds. What's that? Million rand, plus minus, maybe a little bit more. He wanted a million rand, let's call it a million rand for 20% of his company. So he's valuing his company at five times one, five million rand. But he sold in the last eight months in his hotel, he sold two of these. Okay? Now that for me is, 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 is an excessive valuation. Okay? So be careful, be careful about that. You know, a, a, ter, a common term used in a lot of projections is, is the hockey stick. So I don't know how many of you are familiar with hockey stick, but just to, I mean, it's, so what they're saying is, don't worry, we're going to make a little money in the beginning, and all of a sudden we're going to ramp up, and we're going to make lots of money. That is often the case, but, but I think in terms of when you're doing a pitch, yeah, people want to see what, what the realistic scenario is. And I think it's almost good to, you know, if you go in with a scenario of projections, do, a, do your best case, do your medium case, and do, do a case of what happens when it goes wrong. So if the market turns against us, will I still be able to pay you back your money? Can I, can I change my business model? And I think those things are important. Generally, people think, listen, if I go in with a big valuation and big projections, these guys are going to give me a lot of money. But it doesn't work like that. They've spent many years and many pitches looking at these things. They understand how it works. Um, unethical practices, yeah, I don't have to remind any of you because you're all people of high integrity and high ethical values, but, you know, for me the key around unethical practices is that once you've done it, it's over. You can't come back from it, okay? Most of you who end up being entrepreneurs, and the entrepreneurs are the people who drive our economy and still in the small, medium enterprises employ the most people in our economy, and you're probably going to do a lot of pitches in your life to potential investors or banks or looking to raise money. But I can promise you, if there's one ounce of suspicion around unethical behavior in terms of what you're doing, you're going to get one pitch and that's it. That last one about the poor timing, that, I suppose that's really just reflecting on, you know, know the industry which you're operating in or the country which you're operating in. Be aware of what's happening out there. Don't come and try and sell analog TV decoders to um, Media24 when everything's going over to digital. So it's very, very important. Are there any questions on any, on any of these? I know it's a lot of information. And remember, you've, got to, you've probably got to cover more or less all of those in three minutes, somehow. Okay, you guys are going to get lots of money. I also just thought I'd, I'd throw this in there because um, it's a question where the, that I get asked a lot is what's better, debt or equity? Do I want somebody to take part of my business or do I want them to lend me money that I can pay them back? And I suppose there, there's, no, there's no real right or wrong question. Um, I think it's probably a bit of a combination of both. 
I think as somebody selling an idea or selling a, or looking for money, often, more often than not, people want, sorry, debt finance, because then eventually when you sell your company, like, what's it, WhatsApp, it got sold for 16 or 19 billion, you're not giving much of that equity away. But the reality is, the debt finance, your serviceability of that in the early years of your business are quite hard. So you might get somebody to invest equity in your business and you might only need to pay him in five years' time or pay him some dividends in five years' time. Whereas if you get equity or debt finance from a bank or a funder, they're generally looking for some form of cash flow every year. So one's really got to understand, again, probably comes back to understanding your numbers and your cash flows. Um, yeah, so I, th I think it's difficult with a startup not to give away any equity. What we probably most often see, it's a little bit of a combination between, between the two. Um, but it is something that one needs to consider before you go into a pitch. And I'm a firm believer in luck. Um, I think we all make our own luck, but, you know, yeah, luck, luck will play a role in it. Um, and I think specifically in, t in terms of the amount of, of pitches that a lot of these people see and a lot of amounts of time people come and ask them for money, you know, it might just be your lucky day. They might be in a good mood. I don't, know how, I, I don't know how you can facilitate that you catch them in a good mood or not, but I think luck does play um, a role in it. Just in, in, the, in the essence of time, and I know everybody's got things to do. I just want to remind you of two things that I, that I did say. And the one is just following up on, on your question as well. Don't underestimate the power of testing your product, of testing your idea with, the relevant, with your demographic, whoever you think it is. And that test, it doesn't have to be, I'm not talking about rocket science here, I'm literally talking about on the ground interviewing people. I mean, we, within Deloitte, we have a, a huge strategy, and, um, strategy business in our consulting practice. And we do sort of route to market entry strategies for a lot of, actually a lot of consumer business companies at the moment, and it's generally in Angola and Nigeria and Ghana. And some of our initial research, you know, it's not big IT systems or massive programs and algorithms. It's people on the ground, in the markets, in Lagos, in Abuja, with iPads, asking questions, filming people, that kind of on the ground testing of products, of ways to enter market, don't underestimate the power of that. It's real, and taking that to somebody is very, very powerful. I think the, the, the other thing that, and I spoke about the serial entrepreneur and about the inventor, I think the other thing just to remember, you don't need to be a rocket scientist, okay? Focus on what you know, Focus on making it better, focus on improving it, and focus on making it better than the other person. Okay? Because as an entrepreneur, you're not always going to have the invention. It's sometimes just going to be an idea of making something better. St going to ask money to build a private education school business is not a new idea. But the people that went to go and pitch for it believed that they, had, that, that they knew that business well. They believed they could do it better. And that was what they focused on. I've, I've got one more slide after this, but are there any questions? You guys know everything. Okay. Just the last, the last one slide. I mean, some of you may or may be aware we were involved in the launch lab last year. And just as, as a little bit of a preemptive, so w from a Deloitte perspective, I mean, we're also going to be providing some seed capital to, a, to a, an idea or a, a business. And our, and our thought is this year will specifically be around a social change enterprise. So if you guys are thinking about participating in this year's ideas competition, and you are looking for a, a topic or, a, or something to start thinking about, um, yeah, social, social change from, from us, from our organization, it's, it's high on our strategic imperative. Um, I think as a, as a business, we understand that you, you don't operate in isolation within a society. And um, yeah, these things are, are important. So thank you very much for taking the time to listening to me. If you, if, uh, I know you don't have questions now. If you want to chat to me, Christina has got my number. I'm in an office behind the Big Easy restaurant in Dorb Street. 
I don't get there too early, but if anybody ever wants to come and chat with me, feel free to come chat to me. Thank you very much.